Hi, today I want to show you how you can filter an array in WIST. So more than likely you have a variable or you have the response of an API request that looks something like this. So you have a lot of things in there, but you want to filter with it. You only want to get certain parameters that either meet a certain condition. So the easiest way you can do that is using the dot filter operation in JavaScript. And I know dot filter and JavaScript may seem a bit intimidating, but this is all you need to do. Uh, it is just a few characters. It's not even a whole line of code and this will do everything you need to do. So let's just really quick look into how this looks. So as you can see, we cannot scroll anymore. So we filtered for something and what this filter did, it only gave us or returned us the results from the array that have a price greater than five, in this case, five dollars. And as you can see, I don't see any zero in here, so it seems to work. Uh, and this is what this is doing. So now the question is, how is it doing that? And this way of doing it is similar to doing it another way. So let me show you how the other way would be, which we're not going to use because we like simple use cases. So what this is basically doing is we're going to have a variable which is empty. It's a bit like Xano. If you're familiar with Xano, you know that you do the reducer pattern. You have an empty variable, you loop through it, and every time a condition is met, you add this to the end of the array. This is what we're going to do in waste too. This is how waste works too if you use the run functions or the function editor in general. But Wiz is giving us a bit more code dish interface here. So a way we could accomplish this is create a variable or a const, and we're going to set this as an empty array. And then we're going to do like in Xano, a for loop, it's a bit like a for each loop, and we're going to set the iterator, which you won't see in Xano because it's doing that for you, but we're going to set the iterator value and then we're going to define it for um, table content, which is just a different example, but it will work the same this, in this use case. And what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate over it, it define the iterator and then define our function in here. And if you are already starting to get a bit like, what is he talking about? This is exactly why we're going to use this, which is doing the same thing. So let me just explain you what we're doing here based on the simplified example. So we have our variable. This can be a page variable. This can be the response from an API call. It doesn't matter. We just have any sort of data and we're going to do dot filter. So what the dot filter is doing, it is taking this array, and it knows, okay, there are objects in this array and it is automatically looping over the array, looking into the object and looking if the object, the dot price, so the path of this object, looking on into the price now is greater than five. And if it is greater than five, it is going to add this to an invisible array which it will be returning right in here. So it is doing all this functionality we had on multiple lines, which has a lot of complexity into it in just one line. So it is taking this array, it's going to iterate over it in the object right here. It's going to iterate in the object and then it's looking into the object. It is currently at, at the current iteration into the, into the price field and it's going to look if the price is greater than five. If not, it is just going to skip it. And if it is, it's going to recognize and say, you know what, the fifth object that had five and the 10th had five and so on. And then it's going to compile all of them together and it will be returning you all the ones only that meet this condition. And this is how you're going to filter an array in with and you can work with that in a filter bar and all of that so i hope that this helps you and there will be a whole clonable coming just 
with a whole filtering system with different parameters and the price is in between this and this, like even with ranges. I'm currently working on that. So this is coming anytime soon. And yeah, please let me know if you have any questions and I'm always super happy to help. So please put your questions down in the comments if you have any. And yeah, see you tomorrow.